Hello, my name's Wei Tai Kwok, and welcome to our home here in Lafayette, California, which we built back in 2004. I live here with my wife Violet and two children who are now in college. And um, a little bit about me during my day job, I'm in the solar and renewable energy industry. And for my volunteer work, I spend a lot of time working for the Climate Reality Project. Now this home uh, was constructed on a bare lot back in 2004. And uh, frankly, my wife and I, we knew nothing about building a home. Uh, and so we made a lot of mistakes, but we did want to build a green home as much as we could back in the time. Uh, the good news is that today, although it was maybe a little harder back then to build a green home, today it's actually quite a bit easier, and there's so many more green technologies that I'd love to share with you, some of the retrofits we've been doing in the last two to three years to actually make our home today a uh, zero emission house uh, that runs fully on 100% renewable energy. As human beings, I think we operate on the assumption that moving away from fossil fuels is very hard, or it's expensive, or that it will take a really long time. But is that true? Back in 2012, we installed solar panels on our roof and changed LED light bulbs and even purchased a Nissan LEAF electric vehicle. And I thought at that time that was about as much as I could do because I assumed that it was difficult and costly to get rid of the natural gas infrastructure inside my home. However, I discovered I was misinformed. Uh, I started researching and learned that all electric homes which use high efficiency heat pumps for heating and cooling and water heating were cheaper in the long run because they are 200 to 300% efficient versus my 58% efficient water heater or 90% efficient furnace. It actually only took me 45 days to get rid of all four of my fossil fuel appliances and convert to an all electric home. I wish I had built my house all electric in the first place. It would have been more comfortable, healthier, and more cost effective. Now the electricity used to power our home comes mostly from the 15 solar panels on our roof. But the remaining 40% actually we get it from the grid and our community choice energy provider is MCE. And we've opted up to the deep green 100% renewable plan from MCE. So I know that every month when I pay my bill to them for the grid electricity, those dollars are used to procure California wind and solar electricity. And that's what gives me the confidence that between my own solar panels and MCE, our home is 100% powered by renewable energy and therefore is a zero emission home. We used to have a gas fireplace here, but we've retrofit that to install an all electric fireplace. Now they're actually, the gas fireplace here in the Bay Area, we actually only used it like twice a year. And so we decided to do something more simple with an electric fireplace. There are many, many beautiful ones out there, uh, but we decided to just get an electric log set. So if you take a look here, there's a LED lighting for the logs, as well as if you can see the, the flames in the back, that's actually a projector. It's a projected image of flames. And so it really just creates the ambiance we need for a focal point in this room. Uh, it doesn't not generate heat, although it could if we wanted to, we could turn that on. But this was a very uh, effective way for us to do a low cost uh, electric fireplace retrofit of our gas fireplace. I was skeptical about going electric because I really like my gas cooktop, but, um, but actually in induction works great. And um, we picked the Frigidaire 36 inch professional cooktop. It has five burners. And one of the reasons we picked it is because of the, the kind of old, old fashioned knobs. Um, so, but the numbers are actually are in um, our digital display of the numbers. So it's very easy to use. You turn it from, it starts you know, high and then from 9.0 all the way down to 1.5 and then low. So, um, um, so it's uh, very, very responsive. And um, uh, this is 
our everyday pan that we use a lot. It's a, it's a nonstick. So we can do a lot of our stir fries and um, other dishes in this pot and then we find that it works very well. And this one actually, you do need to match up the pan actually to the burner. And so this one actually usually sits uh, right here. And so that's usually where, where we have the pot to, uh, to do the cooking. Um, one of the uh, huge benefits actually, which I didn't realize was with induction is the ease of cleaning. And um, you basically just wipe down the glass surface with a sponge and pretty much everything comes right off. It's fantastic, I love it. Um, it was, this is much easier than my gas um, cooktop, um, which was much more of a chore and I really dreaded cleaning. So, um, so, it's, um, so, so this is a, a benefit that I really love about the induction. And then the other benefit, actually the other advantage is the um, bed improved um, indoor air quality. Um, cooking on induction actually doesn't emit any air pollution, you know, which gas does. So, um, so I think for those reasons, I'm so happy that we switched to, um, to electric. Now our home used to have a central heating and air conditioning system with ducts, but we retrofitted to use heat pump mini splits. And so uh, we got eight of these wall units to attach to the heat pumps outside. And the great thing about them is that they're all controlled by remote control. I can, I've turned it on to heating right now, and I can feel a lot of warm air coming out to warm our house. And the benefit of having eight of these units is that we only need to heat the rooms that we're actually in. So at nighttime, we just heat the one bedroom and not like the whole house. And so that makes it a lot more energy efficient by having those eight zones for heating and cooling. And we've noticed that that is able to help save on our electricity bills. All right, well, let's check out the um, heat pump mini split in the bedroom here. I'm going to turn it on, and you can see how uh, the remote control will open the louvers and uh, start uh, putting out hot air from the uh, vents right there into our bedroom. I want to show you some of the carpeting and flooring we've used in our house, and this particular flooring is made by a company called Interface and a brand called Floor, F-L-O-R. And it's great because they are... Uh, one of the most sustainable carpeting firms in the world. And uh, one of the things we liked about it is that at the end of life of this carpet square, uh, you can ship it back to floor and they'll fully recycle everything into new carpets. But uh, if you ever get these dirty, you just go wash them off. Or if they get stained, we have a couple extras and you just uh, plop them in here. So it's, it's just that easy. And believe it or not, they actually do stay down perfectly well. The great thing about a bamboo floor is that it's made from a very fast growing grass rather than wood, which takes a long time to grow. So it's a much more renewable resource in just five to six years, you can create bamboo flooring like this. So we really like that idea of using something more sustainable than wood, uh, and that is bamboo. Well, this is one of the most popular things in our house for sustainability, and that is our toilet, uh, because it's a flush and wash toilet where after you've done your business, you're going to come in and you just flush here, and then you can wash your hands here, some soap, and just wash hands, and this water is going into the, the tank, which will be used to flush the next time, and therefore, you'd save, you know, two gallons of water each time. a 75 gallon gas hot water heater for our house before and we replaced it with a heat pump hot water heater which is using this heat pump technology here to warm up some water warm up water outside and then send it into the house to be stored in a new 83 gallon tank uh, this unit is a little bit different from the normal ones because it's a two-piece unit it's one piece here and then the tank indoors but most of the heat pump hot water heaters on the market are actually single units which are have the whole thing inside the house. Now this is the heat pump running our air conditioning and cooling and I want to just show that it's actually not too noisy. One thing I was worried about was whether or not the fan would be loud or not. But I'll stop talking and you can sort of see it's not that bad. This year, we also replaced our asphalt shingle roof with a metal standing seam roof. 
And one of the benefits of that is that it's more energy efficient and fully recyclable at the end of life. It's actually more energy efficient because uh, it's less heavy and less mass, and so it absorbs less of the thermal energy from the sun in the summer compared to asphalt shingles. And my wife and I, we definitely noticed during those hot spells in the summer that our home was noticeably cooler uh, because of the better insulation factor of a metal roof. Also, metal lasts a lifetime, and uh, rather than just every 20 years replacing our roof, it was something that we felt we could keep all that asphalt out of the landfill and um, use metal, which is fully recyclable. All right, and here's how my electric car charger, which is connected to my solar system, and we're going to plug it in here to the front of the Nissan LEAF. It's a 240 watt charger, volt charger. Here we go. And in about three or four hours, the whole car will be charged up and ready to go with 100 miles or so. Now, part of our retrofit involved adding the insulation to our building envelope to be really airtight and doing sealing of the ceiling and so forth. But that meant we needed mechanical ventilation to be added. So we got this HRV heat recovery uh, ventilator. And that is something that helps to bring in fresh air from outside, uh, but it also transfers some of the warm air from indoors, so it's not all just wasted outside. Well, this is where my gas meter used to be, right here. Here's the gas line from the street, and here's the line that goes into our house. And I'm happy to say that after we retrofit our home to get rid of all fossil fuels, we were able to remove our gas meter and disconnect from the PG&E gas grid. And originally, I thought this was like an impossible thing to do, but it turns out that we did it in just 45 days. So if you think it's impossible, then like I thought it was impossible, I hope that you'll be inspired to know it's not impossible. And if I did it, you can too.